In the Bronze Age, Central Asia went through a major genetic transformation. In the Europeans from the Central Russian Corded Ware culture, namely Fatianovo, reached Central Asia and settled there. In this video, I will show you the autosomal DNA results of three individuals buried in Kokcha in Uzbekistan belonging to this cluster of early Aryans. They strongly resemble Sintashta and other Bronze Age Aryans of Central Asia, but nonetheless have a slight shift towards indigenous Central Asian farmers of the Bactrian archaeological culture. The three individuals are all male and their names are, uh, the names I arbitrarily assigned to them are uh, Ashtad, Sahrab and Anish. Uh, Ashtad's Y DNA is R1A, it couldn't be determined what exact subclade, and his mitochondrial DNA is U2. Sahrab's, uh, Sahrab's Y DNA is Q1A, and his mitochondrial DNA is T, and Anish's Y DNA is actually R1A Z2125, which is my own subclade, Ma Ancestor, and his mitochondrial DNA is U5. All three men lived in the Bronze Age between 15th and 13th centuries before Christ. Let's move on to the phenotype and uh, other traits of Ashtad. Ashtad is predicted to have brown eyes and brown hair with my Nashakot. He actually is predicted to have curly or kinky hair with my hair ID. Two, uh, his most likely at BH1, but it's kind of undetermined. He does not have BH2 or BH3 or BH4, so definitely darker eye color. Uh, and he most likely has white skin based on his genotype in SLC 24A5 and SLC 45A2. Uh, there's other variations that I decided not to include on this screenshot because why should I? You can download his genome and explore by, by yourself. Uh, the link to download all the genomes will be in the description. Uh, now, when it comes to DRD2, he doesn't have any of the European no go variants in profinacin pro variation of DRD2, so higher odds of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2 receptors, and he does not have any of the, well, this other variation in DRD2 doesn't really have a name, but he doesn't have any uh, derived variants there, so that's, that leads to less dopamine D2 receptors. Interesting genotype here. I think they cancel each other out, so he probably have, he'd probably have average normal dopamine D2 receptors like everybody else. Uh, when it comes to lactose persistence, he does not have the European or the Arab lactose persistence mutations. Uh, when it comes to the sociopath gene OXTR, it seems that he has um, it seems that he has the sociopath genotype, right? Uh, when it comes to some other variants that he is genotyped for, he has increased risk of Parkinson's, increased risk of type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. He has a genus set which lowers heart attack risk, pretty cool. And he also has a genotype that makes him seven times more likely to respond to antidepressants. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got a super high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a low risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, he's got a average risk score for Parkinson's disease. He's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a very low risk score for type 1 diabetes. Uh, he's got a very low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a very low risk score for coronary heart disease. And he's got an average risk score for asthma. Now let's move on to Sahrab. As you can see, I depicted him uh, with a bald head here. That's because he has a genus set that increases his risk of baldness by seven times. Uh, when it comes to coloring, he's predicted to have blue eyes with a neighbor center. A uh, snub shaped nose and blonde hair with my Nashakot. Uh, he's actually predicted to have straight hair with hair ID, but that doesn't matter because he's bald. You can't really tell what his hair texture is like because he's bald. Uh, he's got blue eye haplotype 1 and BH2, and he's actually heterozygous for BH3. Definitely very light um, eye, color, eye color genotypes in the OCA2 and HERC2 region. He has white skin based on his genotype in SLC45A2. Uh, now, when it comes to DRD2, he also does not have the European no-go learner variant. Once again, more dopamine D2 receptors. And in the TAC1 variation, he's got actually A1A1. It's a very super exotic genotype. It leads to less dopamine D2 receptors, higher odds of ADHD and other stuff. I say it's exotic because it's not really found that f at higher frequency in modern humans. However, if you look at chimp, gorilla, monkey, Neanderthal, they tend to have A1A1. So it's, it's just exotic for modern homo sapiens, right? Most modern homo sapiens have A2A2 here. When it comes to OXTR, he also does have the sociopath 
uh, genotype there it seems like he might be a little bit sociopathic and he does not have east asian edar when it comes to lactose persistence mutation he does not have the european or the arab lactose persistence mutations and when it comes to other uh, other genotypes he's got a genotype that increases his risk for type 1 diabetes and he's got a genotype that increases his odds by uh, three, by three times the odds of testicular cancer. Moving on to his polygenic traits, he's got a high risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, he's got a super high risk score for brain aneurysm. Uh, he's got a pretty high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes he's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes and he's got a pretty low risk score for asthma too now moving on to our final individual this is anish he is predicted to have straight hair with my hair id tool uh, with my nashakot when it comes to coloring he is predicted to have hazel eyes greek shaped nose and brown hair this is how i depicted him here with this image hazel eyes brown hair uh, Greek shaped nose or some intermediate kind of shaped nose not so much Greek maybe and um, Straight hair. Yes, so he had BH1. He had blue eye haplotype 1. He was heterozygous for BH2 and BH3 uh, Most likely he inherited the light variation in BH2 together with the light variation B not even most likely this is definitely How he inherited it so he had an ancestor that's got BH2 and BH3 that's essentially what it means He had an ancestor that got both of these mutations uh, He does not have BH4 and he had white skin based on his genotype in SLC 45A2 and SLC 24A5 now moving on to DRD2 uh, he in the Pro variation, Pro variation, he's got AG, which means one European no go learner variant, less dopamine D2 receptors. In the TAC1 variation, he's got A2A2 genotype, which is different from the previous individual. The, I, I said the previous individual has an exotic genotype there, A1A1. Well, this guy has typical human normal genotype in TAC1 variation, Norm, more, more or normal dopamine D2 receptors, uh, less odds of ADHD and all that stuff. Uh, when it comes to Combs, Val Met variation, he's got GG, which means warrior, which means Val Val, more Combs activity, quicker dopamine reuptake, and less dopamine in the system. When it comes to OXTR, uh, he seems to have only one sociopath allele in the main variation that I've been using for all the other, uh, all the other individuals, so he's maybe less sociopathic than them, but there's another, there's another variation where he's got two sociopath alleles, so that's interesting. Um, now, when it comes to EDAR, he does not have East Asian EDAR, and he does not have the European lactose persistence or the Arab lactose persistence mutation. None of these individuals have the European lactose persistence mutation, which nowadays is very common in Europeans, but it seems that in ancient Europeans, it was not present as much. Uh, when it comes to some other genotypes that he has, he has a genotype that increases the risk of dementia. He has a genotype that increases the risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. He has a genotype that increases the risk of heart attack, aneurysm, and various strokes. And he also has a very interesting genotype in the MTHFR gene, which causes impaired folate metabolism. It's a very interesting variation, uh, because this is something that can be easily substituted. If you find out that you have this genotype, you can easily substitute your uh, health. You can help fix your health uh, by taking folic acid supplements. This is one of the really advantages of genetic testing and how, how it can help you uh, stay ahead of your own health when it comes to his polygenic traits he's got a high risk score for crohn's disease uh, he's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease he's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm uh, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder actually all of them have super high risk scores for bipolar uh, average risk score for parkinson's um, average risk score for type 2 diabetes um, pretty average risk score for schizophrenia He's got a pretty average risk score for asthma as well, and he's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. Since Anisha's genome is the highest coverage genome out of those three gentlemen, I will use him for the GED match results. These guys are pretty homogeneous, and the results would look similar to Anisha's. I know I just said that these guys are pretty homogeneous, and it's true, they are kind of, they do resemble each other, but it seems that there are some extremes. For example, out of these three people, Anish is actually the one with the least BMAC, uh, the least indigenous Central Asian farmer admixture, whereas Sahrab 
quite ironic as he is also the lightest individual, is the one with the most West Asian BMAC or Caucasus or Iranian or whatever kind of admixture. He's the most Southern, the most um, West Asian out of those three individuals and Anish is actually the least West Asian. You can see with Eurogene's K13, uh, K13 results, Sahrab is actually two times more West Asian than Anish. Crazy difference. And Sahrab is also more South Asian than Anish. Look at that. Anish is scoring 4% South Asian. Sahrab is scoring 7.5% South Asian here. And this is the Eurogene's K13 Oracle result for Anish. For, <coughs> for Sahrab, it's looking very different. For Sahrab, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of half European plus half West Asian or South Central Asian. Uh, Anish is much more Northern European than Sahrab. Uh, and this is what Anish scores with MDLP K11. Uh, he's scoring quite a lot of Caucasus and Iran Mesolithic. You can see, you can see here, 31.5% Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture is quite a lot. Uh, but he is closest to Sintashta and Srubna and Corded Wares from Estonia. He is still closest to Sintashta and he's, he does not have BMAC admixture, guys. No BMAC admixture in this individual at all. Sahrab, on the other hand, is scoring quite a lot of ASI and Iran Mesolithic and Caucasus much more than Anish. And as you can see, Sahrab, there is traces of Iran Mesolithic, there's traces of Iranian Neolithic farmers and BMAC in uh, Sahrab's DNA. You can see that Sahrab is actually mixed with the indigenous Bactria Margiana archaeological complex of Central Asia. Uh, and with Pan DNA LK10, you can see more of the same. Sahrab is scoring 5% more CHG and 2% more ASI than Anish. Sahrab is more southern. He's got more of this BMAC or uh, indigenous Central Asian admixture. With the uh, Harappa world, Anish is actually 10% more Northeast European than Sahrab. This is how great the difference between these two individuals is. Sahrab is a lot more South Indian, Baloch, Caucasian. He's a lot more BMAC. He's got a lot more BMAC related admixture than Anish. In fact, Anish is just pretty much pure Sintashta. Anish is just uh, the purest Sintashta there is, whereas uh, Sahrab is Sintashta plus a little bit of BMAC. This is what Anish and Sahrab score with Ancient Eurasia K6. Now the other individual, Ashtad, is somewhere intermediate between these two. He has a little bit of BMAC admixture, not as much as Sahrab, and not as little, which is nothing, as Anish. So uh, these are kind of the two extremes, and Ashtad would be intermediate between these two extremes. Thanks for watching my video till the end. Um, I really appreciate it that you enjoy my content. If you do enjoy my content, you know, it's not that difficult to hit the subscribe button and leave a like uh, and also you can download this sample these all of these samples you can download all three of these samples in 23 and me format from link which is in the description it's all on my google drive in fact uh, my google drive contains all of the genomes that i've analyzed and eventually i'm i'm gonna cover every single genome everything that's out there is gonna be on my google drive uh, thanks for watching goodbye